Okay, so the developers at Cyril have ported over yet another SETI Astro Python script for us. This one's auto background extraction, auto BGE. So now we have three ways of actually doing a background extraction within Cyril, which is really good, right? Having different choices, different options when processing your data is always a good thing. This one's really cool because it goes about it in a similar but different way and is also ways for us to exclude parts of the image from that background extraction. So I want to show you guys real quick how to use it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, first thing we need to do is get the script downloaded and installed. Just like always, since the initial release of 1.4, we're gonna come up to our burger menu, hit get scripts, and then in the script list down here, we're gonna scroll down and we're looking for auto BGE for auto background extraction. Put a tick mark next to it, and then also note the category, which is processing. That will be the sub menu that is put in the scripts menu once we click apply. So just to verify, we'll come up to scripts, Python scripts, processing and right there is our auto BGE. So script is now installed and ready to go. I have previously stacked my seahorse nebula, which is a dark nebula. We'll bring it in the auto stretch so you can see it. I have not done any processing at all to this. So this is a fresh stack. The only thing we're going to do, just like we always do when we first open up our stack is to crop out any stacking artifacts that we have along the edges. So I will just give it a quick crop. And now we're ready to do the background extraction. So this script, like I mentioned previously, is just another way to do a background extraction on your image, right? We now have three ways of doing it. We have Cyril's background extraction right here in the image processing menu. We also have Graxbert's AI for background extraction. And now we also have Auto BGE. So it's your choice on which one to use. I'm not going to tell you one's better than the other. I'll leave that up to you. Think of it as like having three screwdrivers in your toolbox, right? They each do the same thing, but some will work better than others, depending on the project that you're working on. So play with them all, see which one you like best. Even the one that you like best sometimes may not be the best choice for your next set of data. So learn them all, decide when you want to use them. And like I said, it's up to you to make that determination on which one that you prefer. So you can see the interface here. I'm gonna move it over to the side so we can see our image at the same time. Like I said, this is the Seahorse Nebula, a dark nebula, which as you can tell, is very hard to see what's going on in the image right now. And that's where the background extraction is going to come into play. It will start to show us more of the structure in the image. Now, as far as settings are concerned, up in the parameters, we have number of sample points, which defaults to 100, polynomial degree defaults to two, and the RBF smoothness defaults to 0.1. And this is truly one of those instances where the default settings seem to work almost all the time. I'm sure there's gonna be instances when you need to make some adjustments, but a handful of different data that I've ran this through, I haven't had to tweak these settings at all. They worked very well for me. But let's talk about them so you have a, an idea of what they actually are doing to the image. So number of sample points, as you may imagine, is the sample points that it's going to lay down and use to determine the background in your image. Depending on how severe your gradient is, you may wanna increase this from 100 up to two. Again, I would run it the first time with your default settings, see what your end result looks like, and then go back and, and start making adjustments if need be for these parameters. The second one, the polynomial degree, again, defaults to two. This is what removes the simple gradient first within the image. If the gradient looks linear, you could probably actually bump this down to one. Again, I keep going back to default settings work very well, so start with those. And then the RBF smoothness is going to smooth out the image. This value determines how closely it'll try to align the gradient to the sample points that it's using. If you have some smaller structures in your image and the smoothing tends to smooth those out more than you like, then I would suggest raising the RBF smoothness up a little bit, see would you get watching those small structures within the image show gradient removal is disabled because we have not processed the image yet and then we have exclusion areas that we can specify i'm not going to set any exclusion areas right now because i want to show you guys exactly how that works so for right now we're just going to leave all the default settings we're not going to exclude any part of the image and simply just going to click process within the window you'll see the steps as it goes through for each of the gradient removals. And when it's done, we'll have our image with the background extracted. So now we can really see the data that's in this image simply just by running a background extraction as expected, right? And it did a really nice job. It's really flattened that background out for us. So I'm just gonna take a screenshot, kind of cheat here, just a quick way of doing this, just so we can save this view 
Then I'm going to undo my background extraction. And then we're going to create some exclusions. Now, the exclusions work best when you have dark nebula like this, but you can use them whenever you want. If ever you run a background extraction and it looks like the object in your image is being affected by that background extraction, meaning it looks like it's including it as part of the background, washing it out or making it brighter than you would expect it to be, then you can draw exclusion areas. And there's two ways of doing that. The first one is the same way as if you're going to crop the image. You can just hold your left mouse button down draw a selection around the object that you want to exclude, and then come over and click on add exclusion area. Now, this works well if most of your object is within the square or the rectangle that you've drawn. And let's go out of auto stretch into histogram so you can more easily see the seahorse in the background. So with this square, you can see, you know, I've got a lot of the background that's being excluded now, and I don't want that. I just want it to stay away from the dark nebula. So instead of drawing a square or rectangle selection, I'm going to click on my clear exclusion areas to get rid of that one. Before I actually draw my selection, if I click add exclusion area first, now check this out. I can actually draw a polygon, if you will, all the way around the object, making sure that I get most of the background around the object. So only the dark nebula is going to be excluded in my gradient removal. So let's go back into auto stretch. And at this point, again, leaving a default settings, I'm just going to click on process. And once it's done, click on clear exclusion areas. And if I bring over the first image, and let's let me resize this so we can do a little bit of a side by side, but you can see the differences in the dark nebula. So this is my screenshot, right? This is when we did not exclude any areas of the image. And specifically right around here in the center area, you can see how it's washed out, but because we excluded the entire nebula over here, it's a lot more pronounced and the same thing up around the tail of the seahorse here. You can see how it's a lot duller over here, but on this one, because we excluded it, there's a lot more detail left behind in it. So like I said, it's really good for when you have dark nebula in your image, but that doesn't mean you can't use it for galaxies or reflection or emission nebula as well. Again, something you play with, just keep an eye on what's happening and adjust your settings and your selections based on your liking. So pretty cool stuff. We've got yet another powerful Python script for our use within Cyril. And I'm telling you, this Python implementation that they put in here is a game changer for all of us using Cyril. Let me know what you guys think about the script if you ran it yet. As always, I want to say thanks to all my channel members here on YouTube, as well as on buymeacoffee.com. Appreciate everybody's support. If you want to see your name scrolling by at the end of almost all of my videos, become a member of the channel, again, either here on YouTube or on buymeacoffee.com. I also have a beginner's guide that's free to all of my members as a perk for becoming a member. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future videos. Like, share, all the normal stuff. It really helps keep the channel going. As always, thanks once again. See you on the next video and clear skies.